meeting. Um, welcome to the July 17th, 2023 and on credit specification working group meeting. Um, some PRs to review, and then I want to talk about an on credits in W3C format. Um, we may be pushing forward, BC Gov may be pushing forward on um, getting code behind that, um, getting more code behind that. So I wanted to get feedback from the community on that um, to make sure that if we are producing that, we can get to the right thing. Um, after that uh, open discussion, we can talk about anything people want to raise. Um, we are recording, so I'll record, uh, post this after the meeting. Um, reminder, it's a Linux Foundation Hyperledger meeting, so the um, antitrust policy of the Linux Foundation is in effect, as is the Hyperledger Code of Conduct. Um, anyone want to introduce themselves new to the meeting um, and new to the Enoch credits and have... Uh, Feel free to grab the mic and introduce. Recognize, I don't think I recognize Mateo, but welcome Mateo. Um, all right. Um, we've got a few PRs to review, so I wanted to get those um, done. Took a look through them today, saw some things that I wanted to talk about on that. So let's get into looking at the PRs we have. We've got four of them. As noted, um, this one was put in quite a while ago. Um, we've done had a couple of back and forths on it. Um, this is um, to do with adding the link secret. Um, so whoops, let me get these to the right spot. Okay, um, I don't know, Mike or uh, Aritra, if you've had a chance to look at these, but would be good. Looks like most of these, um, not much has changed. Oh, I see a little uh, fix, minor fix there, but the V becomes V. This is where I, I don't know enough about it, but um, slight change there in content. Um, this content is added. Um, Mike, would you be able to review this, um, or have you reviewed it, and um, is is it accurate? I have not reviewed it. Okay. Um, this is my first time seeing it, but this this does look familiar. This looks like he's just taking exactly what's happening in the code and putting it as a spec. Yes, that's that's what we're looking for. Or again, this is a lot of what Aritra is doing. Um, but we do want to make sure that what goes in um, is correct. And I, I can find things up to these parts. Um, and I've got a few comments on um, some of the other PRs from that perspective. But uh, I don't know enough of, of interpreting this. Um, I guess with these PDFs, we can't point out where where in the spec we should be looking. Um, like to find the definition. So that's one of the things that I noticed, Aritra, you did as well, and they're doing it, which is all they do is point to the PDF as opposed to the specific section within the PDF. And even if it's got to be referenced by you know, can't be linked directly inside the PDF, which I don't think we can do um, as the PDF is now. We should be at least pointing to where to go. Um, so, Mike, maybe you take a look at these. Also wondered why this didn't get interpreted properly. Yeah, and the line above it, too. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know what I think it is? The markdown uh, renderer is pretty finicky. You can't have spaces between the double dollars. Right. Yeah. And so I think that's what's going on. Yeah. Because I see spaces. One of the things we could do is simply accept the PR and update, you know, make the tweaks to get the, to get those fixed. So that would be easy enough if the rest of it is more or less right. Yeah. Uh, I think that's all he did. So it's those those sections relatively easy to see. 
Um, I assume you can't do this on the fly. Um, can't do what? Uh, evaluate whether he's got these things correct <laughs> or not. Like, here, well, this... I've got the version up on my screen somewhere else. Uh, so I'm just taking a look. So he put like R caps aren't used. I think they're only used for the P correctness proof. Otherwise, yeah, they aren't used anywhere in else. So like where it says R caps is an empty structure in this version. It's just the those are only used for the setup part. Oh, so it is so, used elsewhere. It's used, but it's not. Like it's not used every time you do a proof. It's only used for the correctness part. So we could probably rip that part out. Okay. Yeah, the unfortunate thing is you can't really comment right here very easily. So maybe we could make a list. Um, we could come back to this though. We'll come back to this. Oh, okay. Yeah, so if we could add it there, that'd be good. What do you want to say? Uh, R caps belongs only in the correctness setup proof. So be removed from here. Yep. And I'm trying to decide why he's saying it's necessary to check. Right, hello. Hang on. Okay, so this is issuance, all right. This is the primary credential. Yeah. All right. Yeah, this is the lighted uh, master secret correctness proof. Okay, let's see. E tick. Oh, okay. Why do we need to find the inverse of u? That doesn't make sense to me. I don't see that in the math anywhere. Like line 320, I don't know why that's needed. Oh, I see, okay. Oh, I see what he's doing. Okay, so this reads a little weird. So probably what needs to happen here is just some clarifying uh, sentence or something that says, before, before issuing begins, we need to verify the blind signing request proof by doing the following, and then I would understand what's going on. Here. Say that again. Before, before issuing, we need to verify the blind signing request proof. Yeah, I mean, that's okay. Well, as follow, like as follow using the following steps, because I was just like, what, what's going on here? <laughs> okay, I see what you're saying.
it's not blinded linked secret correctness proof. It's just a blind signing request. Because maybe in the future you might have more. Okay. Um, I think in the code it's called blinded link secret correctness proof. Mm. What did you want well, to call but, it? But I'd like to call it the blind signing request proof because when we go to a non creds too, that's what it is. So we don't have to change the terminology. Blind signing request proof? Yeah. Okay. Um, like if you've got attributes that you want to sign blindly, you have to do a proof that you truly know what those values are. I mean, you didn't just like get them out any other way. That's the whole point of it. Okay. Okay, this is more uh, another ticket. Um, so I can likely put that in. Sure. The rest of this looks okay, other than uh, once this gets in, does the <laughs> does the math look right? Let's see. I'm looking right now. That looks fine. That looks fine. I'm trying to understand what 325 is. Is that just he's just expanding it out? Yeah, okay, he's just expanding it. Okay, yeah, I've done that. That's fine. Okay, good. So in theory, we could accept this and just clean it up. Yeah, in a future PR. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and accept it. That way we don't have to worry about um, when he gets involved again. Uh, um, Okay. Okay, tails file generation again. Um I'll start with just the um this view of it. Areach is on the call, so whoops. Oh, I always do that. Put the wrong one. There we go. 
Okay, this is tails file generation, which is right here. Um, so change to list of primes to points on the curve. Um, biggest thing I saw here, based on the um, bug that was found <clears throat> in the generation, it sounds like there's um, one extra point included. And, and that was actually the bug um, that's in the implementation. Is that right, uh, that there's one extra? Mike, are you familiar? Uh, I'm sort of familiar with what, it, what it's doing, but like I'm looking at the spec on my screen yeah. just to compare what I've got here. Yeah. To see if it's exact, and I wonder if it was just an off by one error. So let's see. What I understand the bug is is the first and the middleth, <laughs> for lack of a better term, um, ones are the same. Oh, and I know what it is. It is it is an off by one. So here's so here's the bug. Okay. When you generate points, you're supposed to go to like, say, I'm going to create L number of credentials yeah. in the tails file yeah. to represent that many. Yeah. I'm supposed to create points, like say, uh, index one, two, all the way up to L, and then L plus two all the way to two L. L plus one is special because it's tied to the private key. Okay. So by including a point at L plus one, it allows you to forge anything. That one's not supposed to be known. Okay. So this de definitely doesn't include that detail in here. Yeah, so we could add it. Okay, so we need to add that. Aritra, are you <laughs> taking notes here? <laughs> yeah, I see. I've noted it. Okay. okay. Is that enough detail for you or to be able to include it? Yeah, I mean, I have to just write the, right, just the, that we are removing the middle point from the tails file um, yeah. or else we have to show the maths also. Okay. So what, so sh should I also show the maths and, or only just say that the middle point of the tails file is removed because it's associated yeah. with the private key? Yeah, just say it's L plus one. So okay. that it's the L plus one index. So basically you're supposed to create it like one to two L. But L yes. plus one was special for whatever reason. Um that you know, five years ago when I talked to Jan, he had a decent reason, Jan Kamenish. Mm -hmm. But now I don't remember what that was. I think it was because he wanted it to be Un, not as predictable like if you always pick the first one it makes it easy to guess whereas if it's somewhere in the middle it wasn't oh i see but he did want to include it yeah like it has to be there for the for everything to work out but he said i just didn't want it as the first few indexes because it was easy to guess i was like oh okay but we now we're leaving it out entirely uh out of the tails file yeah yeah it was never it was never supposed to be in there in the first place oh i see but he didn't want it as the first one that's left out that's right okay okay and i'd leave out the reason why we leave it out just say we leave it out um Okay, one to L, L2 plus to two L. That's all in the PDF. Okay. Okay, and then the other thing was, um, okay, this is good. What's this link? Ah, uh, okay. 
Oh, that's still a to do anyway. I think this, oh, you've removed it already. Thank you. Okay. And so this is right. Two plus 12 times the size of the revocation registry is, is, is now correct because the plus one, one of them will be dropped away. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, let's, uh, Richard, can you make those changes and we'll um, get this one merged? Yeah, I'll update it by today. Oh, oh, you know what else I wanted to do, or at least I wanted to ask you about this, Mike. I can add this as another one. Um, what data would be needed to create some test vectors? I was thinking if we had JSON that basically produced, you know, like um, inputs to this, and then an output tails file uh, in you know, base 64 encoded as a test vector. A test vector to see if you've gener properly generated a tails file. Yeah. So what inputs would be needed? Uh, the main thing you need is the curve and just the gamma, which is one of the private keys. Okay. So you just say, here's, here's a gamma that's a test vector. Obviously, don't use this in production. Exactly. And just the curve, and that's it. And what does it mean by the curve? What would that include? Well, like for um, a not for what we're doing right now in the URSA implementation. Yeah, I'm just going to call it the non-creds implementation. Yeah. It's using the BN two five four curve, but any pairing friendly curve would work. Okay, so you're saying you just say what curve type it is. That's what you mean by curve. And then the gamma being the private key yep. for that. And then from, and then you can put in the a base 64 of a tail. Or, oh, and the number of credentials. Yeah. And, and then the base 64 that you can compare your results to. Okay. Yep. I'm going to put a ticket in that will, will, you know, have a couple of vectors in there that people can use to, to, for testing. Right, because the curve tells you what what are the generator points, what's the curve modulus, what you need you need all of that. So the only the only value you really need is the the gamma yeah. and the curve. Yeah, that's it. Okay, excellent. And I imagine there's some of those in the existing implementation. I would think so. I should look there. There might Maybe. be. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. I don't remember. Um, okay, that one's close. Good. Uh, let me get back to pull requests. Um, this one, the only thing I was wondering is, is this um, specific to an on creds or did you, is this just a copy of what's in the BBS plus? A few of these are the copy and I found that there are some that are there in an on creds, but not in the BBS, whatever I could find, I had added. Okay. Uh, but I'm not sure that there is any, that I, I haven't missed something, so. Yeah. Um, I suspect we can put this in and uh, adjust it later. Mike, do you see anything? Anyone else see anything that is wrong, that would be wrong to put in here? And if there's anything obvious missing, we can add it. And I don't see anything wrong. I just don't know if we need all of it. In particular? Uh, do we need range? Like the fourth one down. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we do. It's hard to say. I mean, it doesn't hurt to leave it in for now because we can always yeah. delete it later. Yeah. Let's leave it in for now. I think we're good with this one. Objection. Yeah. Okay.
All right. First one, Aritra, nice work. Okay, last one. Okay, this is the credential definition process. Uh, Mike, do you want to look at it here or? Right there is fine. Okay. Um, Aritra, this is the one thing where it would be nice to include a here's where, again, it would just have to right. be with putting a. Just, just, just put a section in there. Yeah. Like section, what is it, two or three or whatever. Be fine. Just reference a section. Anything more? The rest of it looks pretty good. Good. I think the rest is fine. Excellent. Okay. Um, okay. Should this be to, just a matter of interest, just again, random thought for me, is this a link in an OnCreds RS or should this be to CL signatures? Repo. Is there a CL signatures repo? There is an on-cred CL signatures is the new replacement for URSA. I guess I could click this link and. Oh, where... cause I thought, I thought, uh, okay. So you're extracting out the primitives from the actual protocol. Yeah. Cause in URSA, they were all meshed as one, which I hated. So yeah, th this is this is part of CL thing. Okay, so should this for some reason I'm having trouble clicking on a link, you know how tough that is. Oh, nice. <laughs> I love leaving out the H. Yeah, so this presumably calls, this is the call into CL signatures, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like to me, eventually it could be renamed to sign, which would be very helpful. Yeah. Instead of new credential def. So if, if a reacher, if you could change that one to a link, um, directly into the CL signatures repo. That would probably be a little better. Okay, so I have to link the CL signatures repo where the signing, the creation of public key, private credential key, those are that yeah. function. Okay. Okay, good. Excellent. Okay. All right. Um, good stuff. And we'll keep going with updates um, over the next while. Um, I wanted to get into, um, so as I said, BC Gov is thinking of putting out a, um, doing work possibly via code with us to support um, W3C credentials with the non-creds. Um, John Jordan, came up with this term flex creds, which is a, a thing that um, basically a riffs off of what uh, Manu Sporny and Anil John talked about, where um, by putting uh, a non-creds a signature on a what amounts to a, a data integrity proof, we can have multiple signatures on a single credential, a NIST signature, as well as an non-creds. 
so that we have um, flexible credentials that can be used in multiple scenarios. So that's the goal of this. Um, we want to produce and consume an on-creds VCs in W3C format such that we can fade out the non-creds format and only use the W3C format. So that would be where we're going long-term. Um, this idea of flex cred signing with multiple signatures. So uh, again, so DHS, for example, can use these and, and other um, government organizations that must be able to support NIST signatures. Um, they could have a VC with both. When they use the NIST, they lose the privacy convert. Uh, features, um, but but they can use them as the fallback and use an on-creds as primary and get the um, privacy preserving features of an on-creds. Uh, eventually do the same with JWTs so that, um, again, we can have multiple signatures on a credential, um, but in JWT format versus the data integrity proof. And uh, for the data integrity proof, um, again, I, for those familiar with JSON LD, um, we don't have a way in an on creds to say, oh, this is the context I want to use. So the context would be predefined, and we would use what's called the vocab feature. Um, and vocab basically says, um, here's the JSON LD I'm going to use, and anything that is not defined in the context that I've used, um, here's a, a generic. Um, string basically to use for any undefined um, attribute. And so for the attributes within the credential itself, we use the vocab and then we wouldn't have to have a specific um, JSON LD um, context for the uh, for the attributes in the schema itself. Um, yeah, Steve. Yeah, just real quick question on your first bullet on the last slide. Yeah. Um, using W3C format and fade out a non-creds format. So the W3C format right now allows you to use seal signatures in a ZK. Um, yeah. So is is that where you're heading or that's yeah. that's the, the direction then to because that's an optional right now with W3C, and I was hoping that would become less optional. <laughs> so what we're doing is allowing, um, you know, allowing an non-cred signature to be a uh, proof, sorry, an non-cred proof to be attached into the proof of a W3C format JSON-LD data integrity proof. And with that, um, it, it gets processed, used, completely as an on creds, you know, blinded link, sec link secret, um, you know, no subject, um, all of the same things you get in an on creds, but the wrapping, the, the data structure is W3C format compliant. Okay, awesome. Now, I just wanted to clarify as we got started, I'm, I, yeah. I think this is excellent. Keep going. Thank you. So um, this is the work that Andrew Whitehead did a while ago to to do the transformations into it. We've we've um, shared that with the you know the JSON LD folks. We've done, in fact, Patrick Saint Louis did uh, an actual demo of this using a W three C wallet and exchanging the credentials, and it and it all worked. So this is to sort of complete the transition from proof of concepts into real real use. So the first work before before coding would be to um, formalize the, the transformations that happen because really that's all it is. You, we're just doing a transformation of the data elements into different places, but it's just simply moving JSON elements around. So align with the data integrity proof um, standard is, uh, a, a question I've really got to ask of Manu and Dave Longley when they saw this, they said, oh, this looks really good. There's a couple of things we'd like you to align with the data integrity proof. So I, I just have to find out what those are. Um, so that one's kind of a, um, just to ask some questions and, and read through the data integrity proof. Um, for those not familiar, a data integrity proof is really um, 
the basis of a W3C JSON LD credential, um, the data integrity proof is the actual um, proof format. And then the W3C is really just a profile that says, oh, by the way, you're going to use data integrity proof, but you're also going to have these specific things that are um, required or, or optionally used in that proof. So you can use a data integrity proof for everything for it to be a, a verifiable credential that must have certain um, constraints on it, but that's it. Um, start with the vocab. Um, issue date is a required field. Um, in in non-creds, obviously, it might be within the schema. So there might be a, an issue date within the schema, or it might have to be added because it's not part of the schema. Um, obviously, if it's added, it's not signed um, with an on-cred. So that's an interesting attribute. So we want to define the handling of that. Why would it not be signed? Um, so uh, the way we do this, I should have this up. So let me just open this up. Um, Uh, let's see. My thoughts are the, the VC is just exactly that. It's just a data format. You don't have to store it as that. You can store the credential however you want. And then it just becomes like a transport format. Yes. That's basically what we're doing. So this is what uh, what it looks like in a non-creds format. This is a, a credential. So if I come over here and I look at this one, this is what it looks like now in a non-creds format. So it's a single name attribute, Alice Jones, and it's got an encoding. And then here are the various elements all around it that are in the non-creds, okay? In W3C, it looks like this. This is where the actual data is stored. This is essentially a base64 of all of those other attributes that were in it. Um, a few things go here, but we've got this issuance date that is outside of what is signed. So. A non-cred simply signs these elements, right? Plus it adds the, the link secret. This is outside of what would be signed by um, a non-creds. So that's why I'm saying it's not signed as part of this signature. It's not part of this signature. Well, couldn't you just add it in there? And then so, when, you're, when you're translating formats, you just paste it in there. Um, there's ways to do that, but it's a bi-directional transformation. So whichever one you start with, you have to be able to loop back and, and produce it. So that's why I'm saying we've got to define how we handle it. Does that make sense? There's there's things you can do. I'm sure. just saying you have to formalize. Okay, here's what we're going to do. That's probably the trickiest feature because it is um, a required field in an on in W3C. It is the only required field. So if I come back to this thing, um, I don't have, normally you would have a subject in here or an ID for the subject, not necessary. And so we actually don't have it. Although, you know, obviously in a schema, you could put the subject in and you can put issue and state into here. So that's one way to handle it. Does that make sense? That's what I do in the non-creds too. Yeah. And I just used RFC 3339. Yep, exactly. Uh, 3339 is ISO dates. Sorry. Yeah, RFC okay. 33s and a 9. Yeah. 3339. Yeah. That's date and time time on the internet timestamp. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. That's what, what I was, yeah, that's exactly what we talked about last week in the, yeah, that we would use that and then encode it. So put it, it also corresponds to ISO 8601. So you could say it's a combination of both. ISO, yeah, that's it. Okay. Versus, I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't recognize the number. 8601, I recognize. Um, we've got to make sure that all of these are supported in the uh, revocation in both the issuance and in the presentation. 
and then revealed and unrevealed and self-attested in the uh, verifiable presentation format. Um, we document the actual transformation. So Andrew has implemented all of these things. So there's there's code um, to actually do this. Um, it, it's just a question of exactly what they do. So he's written up the code to, to do the transformations. Whoops, that's the wrong repo. That's what I thought. This looks a little easier than that. Um, so basically, he's got a, a decode and an encode, uh, or sorry, a 2W3C and a decode W3C, which basically just manipulates the data to move it in and out of that signature field. So we wind up with the actual data elements. Um, and it's just a, a pretty simple transformation. There's the to and the from. Sorry, that's the to and the from. So just documenting that. Um, so we have it. Um, document how to handle multi-signature VCs. Um, this is where, um, again, coming back to this format where there's multiple proofs in here. So there's a there would be a comma here with a NIST, a type of NIST signature and, a, and another signature field. Yeah, so one one in one implementation we did, Steve, yeah. was uh, or Steven, sorry, was we just put um, in the proof field we put uh, types, and it was an array, array yeah. of objects. Yeah. So then it looked similar to this, where we'd say type, seal, sig, encoding, whatever signature, whatever value, you know, and so on. So we had yeah. multiple values in there. Yeah. Yeah. And that's exactly what, um, yeah, that's the plan for what, what, um, for doing that with NIST signatures and so on. Um, longer term possibilities, as I mentioned, using the same thing, but using JWTs. And then this one's a little obscure. Um, so I, I don't have to go into this one, but for those who understand JSON LD and what a data integrity proof does, it's basically, signing the entire context so it assigns uh, signs the context of the um credential plus the data values within it that's that's essentially what's being signed so the one thing obviously an on cred signs the data values but it doesn't sign well the encoded data values but it doesn't sign the json ld because it has no concept of json ld um, but there are ways that we could possibly do that um, that I've come up with or thought of and may or may not want to go further with that. So that's formalizing um, what we're going to do. Then the next one is um, coding it. So the ability to receive a, cred a credential um, signed with a, no a non-creds, but in W3C format. Um, and basically, it's just transform it into an on creds and process it. Um, you want to retain the the client, the holder would want to retain both forms in case there's multiple signatures on it. So they they might want to hold on to the an on creds format. They might want to hold on to the W three C format. So they might have both. Um, for this, um, I'm not entirely sure where the line is between an on-creds RS, the an on-creds implementation and storage. Where is the line between say Akapai and an on-creds and the storage, um, Aries framework, JavaScript and on-creds and the storage. So this is just a clarification to be done. How much of it is done in an on-creds library itself and how much is just left to the holder software to handle. Um, receiving a verified presentation in W3C format, at, at minimum, transform and process and return a, you know, verified, not verified. Um, and then there's a question of whether um, return the data in both the W3C format that it was received in and the non cred so that it could be saved in, in either format. Then 
once we're able to handle receiving them, we obviously want to generate them. So an option in um, in the generate for the VC to say, hey, I want to uh, put the data in an on-creds or W3C format. Um, you may have received the data um, not just in an on-creds format, but in W3C format already, perhaps with a proof already on it. So the idea there would be you receive a W3C proof, but you want it uh, and an on-cred signature attached to it. So an additional proof added. So that may be the operation being done, at which case um, you need to take the data out of the format it's in now, generate it in on-creds, matching the schema and the cr credential definition being used, transform to W3C format, potentially adding, um, the credential to the signed and handing it back. And then this is some notes on, you know, the issued date field, whether it's part of the schema or whether it's not included in the schema and what to do about it. Same thing with a uh, verifiable presentation format. Obviously there would never be multiple signatures on it in this case. So it's a matter of just generating um, the non creds, transforming it to the VP and returning it with the issue date set to the current date time. That one's easy. And then finally, a demonstration of it by putting, uh, encoding it in Akapai, adding, adding um, ability to do multiple signatures on a single one. So what's the API look like in Akapai? What is the API look like to say, hey, I want this in W3C format? Um, my hope is that with doing that, we get all the features we need in a, you know, if I define this as a, as a task for a developer, can we get all the way through that? Um, again, I, I don't know if, um, if people have any feedback on that plan, but the, as I say, the idea would be to put this, define this as a package and saying, this is what we want done as a coding exercise, we'll probably do this part ahead of time. So decisions are made ahead of time, but the rest of this would be a, um, a code project that we would publish out possibly with, um, with funding attached to say, hey, implement this. So I don't know if people have feedback on that interest. All right, if, um, as I say, we're likely, BC Gov is thinking of posting this, so uh, would, we'll definitely let people know when this is, is posted and out there, if that gets done, and, and um, encourage folks to think about implementing it. If anyone wants to contribute or wants to help define the direction of this, um, welcome your feedback on, in doing that. All right. Um, the last thing was, is there any other topics people want to, um, talk about on this call or is there any other topics to go over? Will do, Steve. I'll post the slides and, um, share that. All right, productive meeting. Thank you all. If anyone has any questions or comments or anything, let's go back and forth on Discord. Um, Aritra is gonna keep working with Mike on um, doing additional parts. I have some to-dos in the specification to work on. So we should have a few more things in the next couple of weeks to talk about on the next call. Next week, we'll... Um, the plan is to do some more on, um, an on creds too. So next week it's the later, uh, call and we'll do an on creds too. All right. Thanks all. Have a great week. Thanks. Thank you Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.